All right, guys. I'm sorry about that. We're back here. We are back. Technical difficulties. Neither of us has a degree in engineering. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> you know, I tried to get too uh, cute with all the different sounds and everything, and it's just crazy talk. All right. So, so yes, it, yes, L- Lights Red Angel, Adventures in Live Podcasting. What what a mess. Um, and I love Laura said that buffering is a cuss, you know, a cuss word. It totally is. I hate buffering. <laughs> My God. Well, for those of you joining us and you've stuck it out, thank you very much. People disappear all the time. Most are found. Eventually. Disappearances, after all, have explanations. Usually. Welcome to Outlander Cast with Mary and Blake. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. host mary larson my name is blake and i freaking hate live podcasting (laughs) what the heck well i'm excited about it now we know that we just can't put it through the mixer or whatever the heck was wrong with it and we get to chat with you guys thank god finally all of this is over and we're here now and we're excited and uh geez what like what do you want to talk about um, our favorite things from this season. How about you? So if you're just listening, uh, make sure you're over in our live chat so that that way you can see what's going on. Ooh, and Judith wants to know, Blake, are you tempted to read the book before the next episode is Jud- read? Judith, hell no. There is no way I'm reading this book. Not going to happen. I can't do it. Don't want to do it. I want the show to speak for itself. That's just the end of it. Okay. You know, and I, and I, I, I don't want to read the first book. I don't want to read the next book. I don't want to read any of it. The show should stand on its own, in my opi- opinion. Outlander Online wants to know why not. Well, because like, like, like I said, I, I think it, it should stand on its own. Uh, this, to me, I've gone into it as Ron Moore's creation. And I think I should continue having it as Ron Moore's creation. You know, I'm sure Diana Gabaldon did did her thing. She uh, had fun with it and she created her story. But to me, this is Ron Moore's voice now. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? What do you think? I, 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 mean, um, I mean, you're I, reading it. I completely it. disagree. Like, I have read the book, so I completely disagree. Uh, oh, well. Uh, oh, Christy, <laughs> I am not scared of the size of the books. I read all of the Game of Thrones books <laughs> and I did everything. Yeah, that's right. Just kidding. I know. Yeah, definitely. Uh-huh. Actually, no, I kind of like this live live podcasting. I know thing. we might have to do it more often. You guys rock, you especially did. while we're in the hiatus and we're not watching the show. And we're all sitting together, you know, having our tea or whiskey. Um, this is great. <laughs> Actually, this is kind of cool. All right. How do we sound? Do we sound OK? I hope so. I hope it's not echoing. I know if it, if it if it's echoing, guys, I'm sorry. That sucks. Winter is coming. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't remind us. I'm so afraid of those snow zombies. Oh, no echo. All right. Sounds perfect. All right. Good. You know, and for us, winter actually is coming. We're, we're going to be suffering through all of the Probably snow. Probably one of the worst winters on date. If any of you live in the New England area of the U.S., I guess the Farmer's Almanac said that this is going to be like a crazy, cold, snowy winter. So, uh, well, how the hell? How the heck do they know? I don't know. Farmers are smart. Farmers are smart. You ever read like the Farmer's Almanac? Outlander Online says that they that he or she. I think it's a she. I don't know. There's a picture. Oh, she of lives. Jamie. In, they live in Canada. Yeah, it's cold so there too. Hey, where do you live in Canada? And Gretchen, you thought this last year was a bad one. This this one doesn't even come close to what's going to happen. Fourteen fifteen. I could tell you that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, we got gosh. a couple of TARDIS blankets. I love it. All right, so <laughs> let's chat about this this whole season like our top five our favorite things so blake and i are going to name off our top five favorite things about outlander on the series and you guys get to help vote who wins and get some input so continue to join in the chat room write whose name you think has the best picks yeah. and uh, how we're going to clearly do this. it's going to be me we, we all know that 
<laughs> we all know that I'm I, after my debacle of pissing everybody off about Frank. You know, I feel like I'm um, between that and saying that j- comparing Jamie to Justin Bieber. <laughs> Goodness. Listen, I still stand by that. Jamie to me was Justin Bieber. Oh my God. Um, in the never say never video, he did steer my heart and then he became a jerk. So, I, Oh my God. No, 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 no. I'm but standing Jamie does by not become a jerk in my opinion. Listen, like I said before, the only reason why I felt that he was Justin Bieber was because I didn't understand him. You didn't understand the fandom. No, That's what I, I it didn't was like. I didn't. I didn't understand the fandom. I didn't understand the reasoning. I couldn't understand why he was so popular based off of what I had already seen to that point in time. WS Daniel 2 is already saying, no, not Justin again. I think people are sick of hearing you talk okay, about Okay, all right, either. all right. I promise. I promise. I will no longer compare it to <laughs> Justin Bieber. You guys have won. As a matter of fact, I had yeah, Bieber, definitely. No, um, no, as a matter of fact, um, I, I actually do see why Jamie is so keen and important and everything. I get it. I, I, he is kind of a man's man. He's a little sensitive. It just seems too perfect to me. Uh, you know what I mean? Don't worry. You just just hang on tight. Okay? I know. I know. And that, you know what it is too? Sam Hewen, he's just so good looking. Like, I think I might even go to the other side for Sam Hewen. Well, you're married to me, so stay here for a little while longer. Which is exactly why (laughs) I'm never going to go to the other side because I got my girl. All right. (laughs) Well, all right. Now that you are like fully on board with us with our Outlander love, (laughs) welcome to the club. I feel like I need to give you a pin. Uh, Um, I'm still team Frank, though. Okay. Um, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, Diane. Diane Selberg asked if you can say the infamous Boston. Oh phrase. my God, Diane! I cannot stand that saying. And as a matter of fact, can anybody you actually in, park in Harvard Yard? No, you like, can't park in Harvard. I didn't Yard. think so. You can walk in it. You can walk in it, but you can't park there. Oh my God! There's a really good Indian place across from Harvard Yard. Is there really? First time I ever ate lamb. <laughs> so good. Is it really? Yeah. I've only eaten lamb with like Greek food. Uh, it was it was uh, an Indian place, so it was really good. Fine. Okay. All right, fine. I, I will say it. Okay, you guys ready? Okay. Park the car on the Harvard Yard. All right. It, it took away a little bit of my soul to say that. All right. All right. If you want me to say like other random words in the in in, in the accent, I will totally do that. Just name them name them off. <laughs> But I'm in not. The meantime, I, ref- I refuse to keep going with that. Let's start with our top five. So oh. how we're going to do this is Blake's going to give me his, and we're going to discuss, and then I'm going to give you mine, and we're going to work our way up to number one. So Blake, what was your number five? Number five, Bear McCreary. Oh my God! Bear Can- McCreary is a number five. As a matter of fact, um, he could have gone a little bit higher in this segment for me, but I'm keeping him at five because he deserves to be there. But there's just so other, so many other things that are so um, important to the show. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and but Bear McCreary's music is um, definitely a, a part of it. It 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 brings out that kind of uh, that love and that kind of hatred and fear and like that whole scene when they're running up to the stones. Like oh my god. It, it it totally it totally brought me into the show. I agree. He's not as good as Michael Giacchino, in my opinion. He's not the the composer from Lost, but he is definitely a close second, mm-hmm. by far a close second. How about you, kid? What do you got? Number five. Um, we actually tied. We what? tied. I get out of here. I needed Bear to be in my top five. Um, absolutely. I am a musician. For those of you who don't know, I'm a, actually a music teacher. So my primary instrument is saxophone, um, <laughs> but I teach chorus and I live and breathe music. So Bear's music has been phenomenal. I mean, I constantly have to rewatch the show just because I don't listen to what people are saying. I'm listening to the music and how that's helping the mood. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm entirely in love. So we're trying to figure out and nail down the date when you can finally download I know, right? all these songs and iTunes. It's, it's like killing a tease. us. It truly is. I, you know, one of the funny things too is Bear McCreary's music in this show is great. But you know what other show that he does? And it's absolutely phenomenal is the walking dead and he does that music for that show and actually my favorite song on the walking dead is the song for the governor it's like this kind of synth pulse Mm -hmm. it's very simple it's just like bop 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 just like that and it's it's very simple it's very like um just it draws like some kind of dread out of you 
and I, I loved it. And but it, it's it's good. It's good. And, and by the way, also, um, for those of you who uh, I was actually exposing to the leftovers music, that's actually by Max Richter. Uh, I was putting up on Twitter for those of you guys who listen to that. It's by Max Richter, and I also recommend him as, as A well. lot of our friends right now. Oops. I, I gave a shout out to Aunt Goggy. She said that Bear has done an awesome job so far. Love listening out for the Jamie and Claire theme and the Frank theme and the Druid theme and all the different variations. Oh, okay. So yep. um, just wanted to give a shout out. That was a really great, great comment you had on there. But yeah, Bear just rocks. He rocks my socks. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> and for those of you who don't watch Walking Dead, don't worry about it. Um, it's a little scary for me. It Actually, the season premiere is coming out tomorrow night and we're pretty excited about it. Um, but it, it's a totally... If you ever just wanted to watch it and just to see how varied Bear's muscles and music can be, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you can just listen to the Bear McCreary Pandora Station if you don't want to <laughs> watch zombies. Uh, but he is absolutely phenomenal. I, I would highly recommend his Pandora Station. So totally those agree. are our top five. Hey, now, well, for that, for, for that's the that's the fifth one yeah so well, guys yeah guys i guess that's a push because we had the same exact thing yeah we tied that well one. who made a better case let's uh, let's say that <laughs> who made a better case and we'll go with that we, we tied all right number four all right Num- you're number four number four for me is the wrapping of jamie in the sex scene what do you mean the wrapping when when claire wraps him with the uh with the phrase uh, kilt the colors oh okay. that to me was so incredibly like sexy Mm -hmm. and it was so incredibly warm and loving that it it, it, to me was far better than all the orgasms it was far better than all like the the jamie o faces and even the jamie butt scene and i know i know everybody on the thing here is going to freak out when we talk about jamie's butt but the wrapping of the colors was way 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 more emotional and heart-wringing and it actually got to the point that they were actually coming together. Mm-hmm. And I like that they were being, it, it was intimate, you know? It, it was it, it was making love as opposed to just banging. <laughs> That's what they were doing before. Yeah. They were, they were banging and this was making love. It, it totally, it like, that's when they, uh, to me, that's when they consummated their marriage. Okay. At that point when she wraps the colors around them. All right. And I, and I think that is it, a perfect explanation on their love. Mm-hmm. And she's she's falling into it. She's falling into that world. She's wrapping herself up in that world, right? And I think that's what's happening. And that's why it's number four for me. What do you got, kid? Number four for you. My number four are the costumes oh, in this okay. show. Oh, my God. Terry Dresbach? Dresbach? Dresbach, I think. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce it. Ron well. Moore's wife. Yes. Okay. Um, She is top notch oh my god from the moment when in the first episode you see claire's blue coat Mm -hmm. i'm like on amazon i want to find that coat right now (laughs) but then you know that that whole era she completely nailed oh my god how cute was claire's outfit when she got married in the 40s adorable oh i know with the hat and everything they went to an entirely different oh it's on etsy someone said that her coat is on etsy it's on etsy um blake you better go on etsy and get me that for christmas (laughs) You know what? How about like for Halloween? For Halloween, I should be Claire. But, but no, Outlander Online. How much is it? Like 400 bucks? I uh, guarantee you it's at least that much money. Outlander Online is going to find it right now. But so you have the rockin' 40s, all right, which I lust after all of those clothes. Oh, Terry actually tweeted it. Oh. Find out how much it is. I want it. I know. Um, <laughs> and then, but I mean, everything from the 17, the 1700s, like oh, I... Oh, they got the, they got the blue coat. Uh, Lights, right angel. Oh, and it's $400. Light star angel. It's a hundred bucks. Four, no, four hundred. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. I told you it was close to four hundred bucks. Hey, you know that coat's worth it. That <laughs> coat is worth it, especially for a killer Halloween costume. You know what would be worth it? The, it would be the infinity scarf or the uh, the, oh, the the hand, finger the gloves, finger gloves, fingerless Oof. gloves, and even those cool socks that she had um, while she and Jamie were getting a little jiggy with it in the in the grass, uh-huh. and they came up and they had a ribbon. But I mean, <laughs> did God. you just say they were getting jiggy with it? Well, you know, now that I'm teaching, my students have somehow found me in different places <laughs> online, so I need to be careful with what <laughs> I say. The, the, I think the only Smith. person to ever say that is Will Smith, and that is it. Nah, 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 nah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh I'm glad. Oh my God. 
Dina Hervey believes in me that the the hose of the bows were awesome. I mean that that right there, that's what I should get. You yeah. would like that present if I got those <laughs> socks, the like hosiery that came all up with the little bows, but they're probably wool and itchy. Listen, I don't know. I'm going to say this: the man that invented the Gata Belt is the smartest man on the planet. It is. I can't think of a more sexy thing on the planet, maybe except for Jamie or Claire wrapping the the colors around Jamie. Uh, but Gata Belts are like the greatest invention of mankind. It's better than toilet paper, the atom bomb, and like sliced bread i feel like i just need a garter belt for my underwear because sometimes <laughs> i feel like i'm outgrowing things constantly and i'm like this elastic doesn't work too well <laughs> anyway so um then you get to the whole 1700s gosh the the gentleman how each of them styles their their kilt differently mm-hmm. and just all of the outfits that claire wear, wears aside from her bustier at the wedding that is the one piece of costuming that you know why it was distracting it was it looked like it hurt that's it like instead of you know you you of course oohed and odd over her wedding dress so much of the episode but then when you just saw that heaving bosom and you just sat there (laughs) and you said oh my god katrina i am so sorry that must have really hurt um that was the one the one thing that I had problems with. But aside from that, you are completely transported. So that is why costumes are number four for me. I actually thought that we were going to have to add to the boob count when we saw that that bustier. Oh my! Because like it was basically it was basically full boob. Like there there might have been maybe a little you know less not showing, mm-hmm. but it was I, I, we. we it was just, it was annoying. It should be like an honorary boob count. They needed a, if that had been me, I would have gotten like had a lace. Had that been you. I would have gotten some lace to, oh, had that been me, yeah. it would, I, I, I wouldn't have fit in that, let's Ma- just Ma- say. Mary is busty. All right, let's just say it. She's okay. busty. Anyway. <laughs> oh, and Dina also said that she wants the red shoes. How could we ever forget about Galas's red shoes? Hey, okay. this isn't my number four. It's your number four. I know. So. That's that's our number four. Blake is the wrapping of Jamie. Yes. And mine are costumes. All right, who's so better? You Who? guys will have to let us know who yep. you think was better. Let's get it in. All right, number three. My number three is the use of the 40s music in 1743 Scotland. Oh. Loved it. Loved every freaking second of it because it, it took you back in it took you into claire's mind without actually telling you you know it showed you as she's going around and planning her escape and doing everything like that she, and, and she's picking all the all the stuff up and all it like all the herbs and she's got the 40s music going on in her head yeah and this is when again i'm going to say that i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep saying it this is when you have to meet the material halfway and this is when they're making you do it because they're they're just showing you they're showing you that she is a woman she is not of 1743 she is presently thinking of 1945 and if it's something as just as simple as 40s music that is a perfect representation of how she actually thinks of herself. The only problem with it is it confused a lot of people who weren't seeing the depth of what was meant to be. Listen. So a lot of people were confused saying, why is there swing music playing? And they, they didn't really get that. Listen, listen, around. listen. There's, there's something my dad once told me. This is something that's very important. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yes. All you guys, all you listeners, everything, everything that's, everyone that's listening. My dad once told me, son, there are a few things in this world that you can't fix. And one of them is stupid. And if you can't figure out that she is a woman of the 1940s and the 1740s by listening to that music, hey, I, I'm, I'm sorry, you, you, I can't help that. <laughs> I can't, I can't help the fact that you don't, <laughs> that you don't, that you don't get it. Well, that's kind of mean. Well, it's not mean. It's just you know, it is, it is what it is. Oh my goodness, Blake. Well, Laura <laughs> wants to know: Did you ever listen to 40s music before the show? I did, I did. I love 40s music. I love I love all the big band music. I love. I'm not. Uh, Glenn Miller isn't 40s. I think he's more 50s. Really? Yeah, I think so. Is he 40s? You don't really know. Whatever. <laughs> you're the music expert. I know. That's why I'm laughing at you. <laughs> My goodness, you're the history expert. That's true. Um, Blake did. Speaking of that, our history lesson is coming up soon. By the yes, way, yes, Blake did kind of sometimes listen to that music i listen to it more i'm a jazz girl that's so. true okay anyway nice duke ellington three. how about that duke ellington's 40s 
I'm just going to move on. Um, <laughs> the, the wedding night is my number three. The entire wedding night. Now, here's how it's going to go down, guys. I'm a book reader. So I have been looking so forward to this night, okay? Because Claire has her mind blown, all right? <laughs> and we have been looking forward to this because the sexual tension between these two characters is out of control, and it finally got to happen. And when Claire takes her hand and goes around Jamie's body and touches down his bum and comes back up. And when Jamie glances over his shoulder looking at her, I melted, absolutely melted. And I was like, this is the moment I've been waiting <sighs> forever for. <sighs> so wedding night, I know you don't get it, Blake. I know because you're like new to the Jamie train, but God, man, that would probably be even some book readers number one. All right, all right. You know what? This this was unfair because any time you could have broke out the wedding night at any time in this whole entire conversation. Yeah, I know. And it, it was such a loaded n- number. Like, it's such a loaded subject because everybody's going to agree with you. See, everybody here, sorry, Blake, Mary wins hands down. Yeah, LOL. Well, you, you know what? You did win number four. A lot of people said that the wrapping beat the costume. So there you go. So we're even. Call uh, it even. What's your crap. number two? That's total crap. <laughs> Total crap. What's your number two? Number two, Ron Moore. Ron Moore is the best thing to happen to Outlander because he is finally making it his own story. My perfect example of this is Claire going to the rocks, touching them, and then Ron Moore making the choice to not make a huge freaking deal out of it. And a lot of people didn't like that choice. A lot of people hated it. I loved it because the show isn't about the time travel itself it's about claire being in the 1740s and he wanted it to be subtle and what he did was he made it flash white and then he gave you that little bit of lightness if anybody if anybody's ever been in a car accident you know the feeling of that weightlessness that hopelessness of like oh my god what is happening to me what like everything is just kind of flying around you and you have no idea how you're going to get out of it, what's going to happen, how you're going to get better. And that's what Claire must have felt like. And by him saying that, as opposed to making this big deal and special effects, and you could relate to it a lot more. Mm-hmm. You could relate. And, and, and to my knowledge, from what you've told me and from what I've heard on Twitter and everything, the, 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 the actual experience of touching the rocks and, and going through time... It's like Claire is being ripped apart and put back together and molecules going and... Here's my Harry Potter reference. It was kind of like apparating. <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would normally play the sound here, but we don't have it, so we can't. I'm just going to say it. Um, yeah, it, it, that to me, that to me when, you, when you see that on the screen, it doesn't give me anything. And I know I've always said, hey, sh- show me, don't tell me. Mm-hmm. Um, but how can I relate to my molecules being ripped apart when I have absolutely no idea what that feels like? But I do know what a car accident feels like. And then Ron Moore has done other things too, like um, you know the whole thing with Mrs. Fitz faking everybody out. And then he's made the choice to tell Frank's story. Now, I am going to piss everybody off by harping on Frank's story. And I get that. But if Ron Moore made the choice to tell this story, he thinks it's important. And it may not be in the book, and that's totally fine. I get it. But he's making the choice to tell a story. He has to tell it right. And now he's making it relevant. With that said, it is what it is. That's the reason why Ron Moore for me is number two. Number two for me is the chemistry between the cast. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go all around, okay? Now, we just we know that Katrina and Sam hot damn if they are not making out in real life dude you know they're banging in real they, life they totally must be because i was looking i'm like are either of them do either of them have a boyfriend or girlfriend they're both single quote unquote i think um but i don't know they look all really good on screen so i hope that they uh are enjoying each other because the chemistry is out of control and just how they all handle each other i just i love it i even love the playful chemistry between the different characters between like the bros you know what i mean between like angus and rupert and how they how they play off one another and and even how murtaugh and 
and Jamie are. I just love how well and how blended this chemistry is between this cast. I think the casting director did a most amazing job bringing these beloved characters to the screen. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, one of my favorite scenes with Murtaugh and and, uh, I'm sorry, Angus and Rupert because is when they they burst into the to the room. They're like, "Hey, did you get it done yet?" I just wanted to see boobs. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted his own boob count, right? <laughs> oh my god, I love it! I love it. Ooh, Jody says that. Did you see that the, uh, that Katrina um, tweeted to Sam yesterday, and there was a tweet with a picture attached. Ooh. I hope it wasn't a sassy tweet. Ooh. Well, did you see that he's been tweeting out like porn links? No, <laughs> maybe he was hacked. He's done, no, he's done it by accident. He did it by accident because he was sending like X's and X's and O's, and like, oh hey, uh, uh, this is a great picture of Cat and I. Uh, dot X X X X. But he didn't realize that he made it as a link. No. So anytime you end it with an X X X X, <laughs> it turns into a. It goes to like a porn site. Oh my god, that's so sad and yet precious. Oh yeah, it was her birthday. Time. That's what it was. Yeah, that's right. That oh my god, was he was birthday. sending her porn websites for her birthday. <laughs> it was awesome. You know what? Precious. I was like, thank God that happens to perfect Jamie. Um, and I just love them. I I love the chemistry. So that is, and you know, it, my number. By two. the way, they are totally banging on the side. There's no way. Like, they, you see all the pictures of them like uh, everywhere on Twitter and like on Facebook and oh my everything. God. W.S. Daniel said that on Axis Hollywood, they said that they watched the wedding episode together with a bottle of wine. Of course they did. Good for them. And then they banged. Because <laughs> that's what they're doing. They don't make love. They bang. Um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about this. <laughs> but yeah, ultimately, um, they, they just like, they're like steamy. And I read today that they're both 34 years old. Yeah. Did you know that? Yes. I did not know that. I thought he was at least in his mid-20s. No. And she was like probably late twenties. He is in incredible shape. So uh, I don't even know what I would do to get in that kind of shape. Um, he does like those really t- those like not Iron Man. What are those ones of Spartan races? He does that kind of stuff. What's, what's a Spartan race? It's that crazy stuff where you like run and you do obstacle courses, and there's like electric wires and fire and stuff. Uh huh. Yeah. Is it is Gerard Butler there too saying Probably. this is Sparta? It, pretty much what it's like. So those are our top two, and it looked like we tied on that one. We All right. Tied. So now we need the drum roll for our number one favorite thing about this season. Go, Blake. Number one. I was gonna put Tobias Menzies here. Oh. I was gonna do it. I was gonna do it, but I'm not. You wanna know why? Why? Because that would encapsulate everything with Frank. And I refuse to let Frank be number one because his story has not been told properly yet. Okay. We haven't seen enough of him. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the Garrison Commander, that episode. That episode is one of the finest hours of television I've seen in a long time. I would agree with that. It was unbelievable. Like, it, it, it was... I just, I just loved, it, it was the first episode where I said, okay, I get it. I get where this show is going. I get w- what the point is for Blackjack Randall. Because every show needs a good villain. Every show needs a good villain. Wh- wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you need a villain. Breaking Bad had one. Lost had one in Ben Linus. Leftovers had one in, in Patty. All these shows, even Star Trek had good villains. You need a good villain. Yes. And Black Jack Randall is, whew, man, he is good. And But even, even, even aside from all of that, it, it was just the directing of that episode. It was the cinematography of that episode. Um, it, it's so complicated to have uh, two people in one room acting out these scenes and all they're doing is just talking to each other Mm -hmm. the cat mouse game the playoff of each other it has to actually work now i know we've all talked about um the chemistry between sam and cat being all lovey and sex and orgasms and all that you know what all great the chemistry however between cat and tobias menzies as cat as uh claire and bjr Mm -hmm. is way more palpable in my opinion you can feel like that other 
disdain because chemistry isn't always oh my god it's so great this is so lovey chemistry is when something is on fire in that room something is like happening whether it's good or bad either way you can see sparks sparks are there and 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 sparks like it's bad sparks like holy crap like i can't believe this is what's actually happening you can see that she is scared you can see that he is vindictive you can see that there is problems happening in this scene. I love that you love BJR so much. And, and I can see that our chat room feels the same exact way. Because you're going to be kicking your own butt. Literally and probably like a few episodes in. But by the end of season one, I mean, you're still going to love that you hate him so much. But that's, it's going to be more that you just hate him so incredibly much yeah well no but see that's the good thing like i hated for all you lost fans i hated ben linus i hated him i hated him because he was smart he was like he was just like he was always but a BJR step ahead isn't smart bjr is disgusting yeah, but that's okay that's okay too as as a character Ugh. i'm not saying i i like all the things that he does and in fact i disagree with it. Who, who wants to punch a girl who tells his it, buddy to kick a girl? You don't even know, man. You but, don't even know. But what I'm saying is, I'm saying, you see, this is the problem with all the readers. You guys tell me you don't even know you do. I'm only going off of what the show has given me so far. Okay. Right? Okay. I'll okay. take a step back so, and I will appreciate that. So this, this, is, this is what I'm saying. As of right now, the chemistry, in my opinion, between Tobias Menzies and Kat as Claire and BJR far outweighs, not, I can't say far, that's not fair. It outweighs Claire and... Uh, uh, Jamie if always then because if to me it's harder it's way harder to be scary than it is lovey you know what I mean Mm -hmm. you can see it in the guy's eyes and that's what's good about it how about you what's your number one my number one I'm sorry Blake I'm gonna kick your butt in this one (laughs) what the heck my number one is to stars for making this possible thank you Jesus All right, I am so incredibly happy because not only did they pick this up as a show it wasn't picked up as a movie that would have been absolutely wretched they took their time with it they made sure Diana was completely on board so much that she even had a cameo they picked Ron Moore they picked fantastic actors and Mm -hmm. they picked Bear and they made this show something that we as book readers can sit back and say we trust you we trust you stars thank god you're doing this they already promised us season two so it's not even like we're going to be biting our nails or anything i give total number one to stars i'm not a huge stars fan i don't usually watch things on stars and now we make sure that we subscribe all thanks to stars and outlander and making our dreams come true and i won Oh. I won. <laughs> this, you guys stink. <laughs> you know what you did? You, you went, you went to the masses, and you were like, "Guys, no, I didn't." Guys, what's gonna make me win? Just no. give me all the, I'll give me all the perfect answers. I promise. I promise. No, because I didn't. I really oh, think the wedding the night and stars and thank you so much and yada yada <laughs> yada. Come I, on, at least I got original. You, you know what? There was a tie until number one. And then I won. <laughs> so thank you. You can. Give All right, me a guys, Sierra. guys. All right, how about we do this? Okay. What was the? Be- oh, by the way, Miss Prudy, I'm a I'm a total soul loser. I know you just put that. I I lose. I I am a soul loser about everything. I can't I can't play games with him because he cheats, and then if we if he starts to lose, um, <laughs> he quits the game. So <laughs> like I love board games, and I used to play board games before I dated Blake. I can't do that anymore. You know how people have like couples game nights? We don't get to go. <laughs> Nobody asks us anymore. Because I'm too competitive. Um, and I'll start yelling at people. Char asked if you do that on video games. I can't play video games with Blake. I even <laughs> bought the Super Mario game and Blake wouldn't play with me because he said I was dragging him down. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> You're too slow. You die too quick. Yeah. So um, anyway. Yeah. All right. We want to know what your... Well, actually, first of all, before we get into that... Mm-hmm. All right, since you won the whole thing overall, and I think that was a Thank total you. it was a total setup. It was a total sell job. No, I'm just awesome Ugh. and I'm a fan of the books and book fans get it with me. Ugh. You didn't even know what Outlander was beforehand. No, I didn't. We have been waiting. But that's the idea behind our podcast. I know, but I'm just saying, you asked me what my favorite thing is and my favorite thing is stars. All right, and guys. I, and a lot of people echo that. All right, guys. So, all right, let's just let's just do this. 
uh, in the in the chat room here. Tell us which one, which of the choices was the best choice. Oh, out of those out of, 10? out of all of out, out of the ten. Okay, we'll refresh. Garrison Commander, Ron Moore, use of the forties music in seventeen forty three Scotland, the rapping of Jamie. I like that it's called the rapping yeah. in the sex scene. <laughs> Bear McCreary, stars, chemistry in the cast, wedding night. And costumes. Which of those was your favorite? Gretchen says all 10. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, of all 10. That's what Gretchen asks. Yes. What, what's your favorite of all 10? Oh, I got a couple of them. Ron Moore and Garrison Commander. Thank you. Be Wisemer 5. <laughs> nice. But we all know we're gonna have what everyone's going to say. It's all going to be the freaking wedding night. Everyone oh, just loves it. Some people said stars. Some people said stars. And you know what? It seems like there's a really good mix. So I think our... Top five was nailed a lot of oh, other I got another. I got the wrapping. I got uh, I got the kill wrapping again. Oh my god, this is great stuff. Blake, you're so so sensitive. You know what? I am a sensitive man. You are. You're more sensitive than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sensitive man. I'm a sore loser. It's because you're Pisces. I'm a. You know that's that's something for you guys. I'm a I'm a total freaking Pisces. Yeah. Everything about me is like way too emotional. And he's in trouble because I'm a Taurus and our sun is an Aries. Oh. <sighs> so. Oh, wow. Well. So my, my life is going to be over. Well, we and asked a f- bunch of people, well, a bunch of you listeners. And everyone, I, I, I got I to give you guys credit. A lot of people participated in this about w- w- when we asked, what was your top five? Mm-hmm. And w- we, dis- we got so many responses that we had to pick one. Yes. We had to pick one. And um, we didn't know what to pick because there were so many good ones until... I saw the one that we were about to announce as the winner. Dun, 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 dun. I'm posting it up. Read it, Blake. Well, <laughs> this is for my girl, Jody Lynn Petrella, a.k.a. at Book Duchess uh, on Twitter. I know she's actually in the room with us right now. She's listening to this on this very second. Jody is our Rhode Island friend. She's our Rhode Island girl. So, girl, whenever you want to meet up to like have, have, a, uh, have like a, a, uh, a drink, I like how it took you that long to remember the word drink. You haven't even been drinking. <laughs> I know. You poor thing. So here it is. Number one, Jamie Fraser. Number two. Jamie Fraser. Number three is Jamie Fraser. Number four. I feel like we need to call him his formal name, but fine. Jamie Jamie Fraser. <laughs> Number five, Blake. J- Jamie Fraser's butt. But um bum ting. <laughs> you could bounce a quarter off of that. Jody, girl, when I saw that, I said that is immediately the winner. Because okay. your love of Jamie Fraser, Jamf. Now that I finally know what Jamf means. Oh my God. Blake literally was like, what is this? Why does everyone, everyone keep hashtagging Jamf? What does that even mean? And I was like, <laughs> I really, Blake? And then I pulled up the meme that someone made of Jamie saying all five of his names. Yeah. And he was like, oh. Oh, okay. I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. I like that we like talk to each other in memes half the time. I know. <laughs> all right. So continuing with our best and uh, best episode, what was your favorite episode, Blake? Well, we all, we all know what the best episode of the entire season was and that is in fact the garrison commander i'm gonna echo you on that really so powerful i mean trust me i loved the wedding loved 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 unbelievable Mm -hmm. but tobias freaked me out so much in the garrison commander that i didn't expect that i expected to be melting during the wedding night Mm -hmm. i didn't expect for me to be so scared of him in the garrison commander i expect to be scared of him in future episodes yeah but that one shocked me so much. Um, and I think it was the the episode that they need to submit for any kind of awards. I mean, it was just yeah. so unbelievably powerful. Because, uh, like, like, again, you finally got it. You finally understood where they were going, like what they were getting at. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It set up a real conflict, finally. You know what I mean? And yes. somebody put, <laughs> Teddy put, he put the claret at risk. And that, to me, is great because, yes, y- yes, we must protect the claret. Not only was it, like a, a really tense and um, like a misogynistic episode kind of. It was also kind of funny. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, and, and BJR himself was in fact funny in, in that one particular scene. I thought it was great. He was just so sneaky that even me as a book reader, I'm like, wait a second. What's going on? And Lord Farquaad. I mean, the, the things <laughs> that the they plastics. added. <laughs> oh my God. We had the best names from this episode. The things that they added in that episode. I just, I, at first I sat there scratching my head saying, what is going on? And, um, we were, I, I was very pleased with what they did. So 
I, I'm agreeing with you. Oh God, Garrison seeing, Commander. Seeing Jamie get that get thrashed like that, it was um, wow. You know, it was it was pretty brutal. People are asking, why did you think BJR was funny? Well, because when he when he was the way he was acting with all like Lord Farquaad and oh, the plastics. Okay, brushing you know, himself, brushing off. himself off. He was busting balls. You know, yes, we must protect the claret. You know, like you don't okay. expect him. Because he's such a mean dude. Because you didn't, you didn't think he was funny when he was being terrible. Oh You're no, 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 he no! But he was funny when he was when he was like with these. when he was being a dink to okay. to the plastics. Okay, you know what I mean? Like he, he was intentionally doing that. Yeah. Um, worst episode. What do you got? <sighs> this is really hard. Okay. Because I loved all of these episodes. If I had to pick, <laughs> douche nozzle. Least... Sorry, Char M just said douche nozzle. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't want to know what that means. Um, uh. Okay, if I had to pick my least favorite episode. I would say rent. Yes, I'm the same exact Get way. Out. Oh my god, we okay. are so married. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, I I know why we needed to because honestly, it was the most like historical. It's kind of like here's the big theme you need to know, you know. <laughs> but I just um, a couple things set me off. I really didn't like that one moment when Angus finds Claire about to pee in a pot, which is fine. That was but actually then, kind of funny. As he pulls her out he's like you're drunk and she's like no i'm not and it was just she was supposed to be acting drunk but it was one moment where i was like oh that you know what to it reminded me, felt, me of what <laughs> you know what it reminded me i know because i said it <laughs> it was like magic that it was so there's this one scene in the first harry Potter you're a movie wizard harry where um where it's the worst acting I think I've ever seen my, in my entire life. Harry's Homo being over. <laughs> Harry's being dragged in by his uncle after they come back from the zoo, and his uncle's like, "What happened?" He's like, "I don't know. It was like one moment it was there, and one moment it wasn't. It was like magic." And <laughs> poor, poor Daniel Radcliffe. It was just a poor moment in acting, and that's what I felt like this was. I felt like Angus was pulling Katrina out, and I had to keep reminding myself, "No, it's because she's drunk. Like it's not that she isn't." A a good actress it just felt like it was a really weird one moment scene kind of shot so i didn't yeah. that really set me off um you know i liked the learning about the wool <laughs> and the piss yep um i was totally grossed out I but I liked was it. Like, and you smell like piss yeah <laughs> yes um <laughs> it was just my least favorite probably because there wasn't any real jamie or blackjack yeah nothing really happened like it just no but it, but something did happen and that's it it's like it gives you the overall storyline of here's the historical setting you need to understand that the jacobite rebellion is going on that's these true. guys are spreading the word this is also how the mckenzies get their money how they do this get to see how many people they're in charge of yep. you get to understand ned i mean ned was a huge highlight that's true um but for people who are watching the show and like the character aspect of it, which we all do, mm -hmm. I felt like it was the one that brought the least amount to it. I agree. So. And, and, and speaking again of Jacobite Revolution, our history podcast will be coming soon. Yay. Probably within the next few weeks. Yes. All right. Favorite character. Oh, BJR. Not even a question. Really? Oh, uh, like not even a question. The okay. guy is just so dynamic. I feel as like a character. I feel like we have to say that it can't be Claire or Jamie. We just have to take those two off the table. Yeah, because like that's like that's again playing to the masses. Okay. All right. What do you What do you got for your favorite character? Angus. Angus. <laughs> How does he do that thing with his tongue? Uh, oh, with, when he does his with his yes. Thing? Like, does he not? Does have he really not have teeth? I don't know. Okay. I, I think I think he's missing a tooth in real life. Okay. Um, but I definitely think Angus. <laughs> I mean, I didn't like when he was mean, but when he's no longer mean, he's great. So I'm if if we can't pick Claire or Jamie, Angus is my bro. yeah. Because that's too obvious to pick Claire or Jamie. He's missing two teeth. Someone said good because that's really gross. He must have practiced that since he ever lost his teeth. <laughs> I got a lot of people here saying Murtaugh. I got some Dougal people here. Yes. See, I don't trust Dougal. Dougal, Dougal freaks me out. See, but you like BJR. What? <laughs> you know, because BJR, you know what you're getting with BJR, right? You know what you're getting. With Dougal, you're not sure. Like, he's like trying to be buddy-buddy, and then all of a sudden he's hitting on Claire. And then all of a sudden he's like kind of being like iffy with, with Jamie. And But he's he, you're supposed to like the guy, right? Do you're supposed to, you think you're supposed to like Dougal? Yeah, you're supposed to like Dougal. I don't know if you're supposed to like him in this show. Re See, I think in the show, the, the feeling that I've gotten so far is like he's the leader, and you're supposed to trust him. He has the, his best, int the group's best interests in his heart. I think the show is really portraying him uh, two sided. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. And okay. It, 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 you're supposed to like him, but he's doing all this crap that 
you're like, oh, bro, like, what are you thinking? Mm-hmm. Like, eventually, it's going to get back to Jamie that he's been hitting on Claire. And what do you think is going to happen then? Huh? Watch out. It's going to be like, dude, Watch back. it's going to be like a potty with, uh, you know, with, 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 a, with a bunch of badness. All right. Least favorite character time. Oh, leg hair. Ew. <laughs> Leary. <laughs> <laughs> leg hair sucks. Well, you, luckily you didn't have to read read her name because you would just be calling her leg hair. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Cuz like seriously, she's so what she's like, "Oh, I just love Jamie. I love Jamie. Let's go make out with Jamie." Yes, Jill Z A. Leg hair does suck. Thank you. Leg hair blows. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and and w- more than one way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, oh, okay. yeah, she taught Jamie a thing or two. Um, my mm-hmm. least favorite character is Father Bane. Oh yeah, well, you see, the thing with Father Bane is that uh, you didn't see enough of him yet. Nope. You didn't see enough. Of I'm him just yet. gonna say nope. <laughs> and I and I feel like he's gonna come back into this a lot more than what they're alluding to in this show. Some bad news is gonna happen with Father Bane. Okay. And like. Like even Bane, like the Dark Knight Rises kind of Bane stuff. Like oh. I think it's going to be bad news for them. Okay. All right. Well, I'm I'm glad that you don't like him as well. All right. Best scene. What do you got? <laughs> oh, best scene. My goodness gracious. Um, I okay. Well, no matter what, like I love um, the love scenes between Jamie and Claire. Oh, um, that you, you play to the masses no, so well. But, but if I wasn't going to say that, I would say the scene of Frank and Claire climbing up to Craig and Dune. Oh, uh, okay. I gotcha. Yeah. If I wasn't going to say the lovemaking scenes, I would, I would say that, um, the moments that I love between Claire and Jamie that, that I love when they're not being physical haven't happened yet. So, okay. um, I love them and I love them as a couple, but I'm saving that for the next season's recap, the next half of the season's recap. All right. A close, a close second was actually a Jamie and Claire scene for me. Ooh. It was, it was it, to, to everyone's surprise. Um, it was when they were holding hands mm-hmm. in the finale, the mid season finale. And they would, they were just rubbing each other's hands. Yes. And that to me, you know what it reminds me of? What? It reminded me of the scene at the end of Sleepless in Seattle when Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks finally meet and they are love struck and they can't stop looking at each other. Yes. You know, they, for whatever reason, they are just drawn. A lot of people are calling it hand sex. <laughs> <laughs> hand sex. Yes, the hand sex between Jamie and Claire. Um, they're just drawn to each other. Mm-hmm. And it's something that's, that's involuntary almost. And I felt that way about the hand sex. The hand sex <laughs> I was... I like that it's now coined that. The, the hand sex was involuntary. It's just because you can't... When, when you are in love with that person that kind of way, um, you just... You can't help... You feel it. It's magnetic. Feel it. Yeah, it's magnetic. You just look at them. You want to touch them. Like when I met you for the first time, um, I mean, besides noticing that you were the prettiest girl I've ever laid my eyes on, uh, which is the exact truth by the way. Um, and I tell her that every single day that she is the prettiest girl I've ever met. Um, I'm sure all you ladies are very pretty, but my wife is just gorgeous. I'm sitting here in my <laughs> in white your robe, robe that you hate. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, <laughs> ultimately, uh, I, I remember that feeling. And I remember that feeling of just like helplessness. I remember my life not becoming mine anymore. It was ours at that point. Oh, you just beat me. That was great. And, oh. and and I think that was I think that um, to me is indicative of what was happening between Jamie and Claire. Hmm. You know what I mean. But that is actually a close second. You want to know what my first one was? Oh my god! I thought that was your first one. I just got so wrapped up in it. That should have been <laughs> your first one. <laughs> well, okay, fine. I'll, I'll, we'll make it a tie. Okay. Uh, the druid scene with all the lights and the dancing and the music and it was very mystical. It was well put together. It was beautifully directed. And that to me felt like Outlander. That was Outlander to me. Like that it was, was magical. It was something beyond what you were seeing on TV. It was bigger than everything. Um, That's what I want to be for Halloween. What, the Druid Lady? Yes. No one will get it because 
only us and Jody watch this show in Rhode Island. <laughs> but Jody, girl, come on, with, come on with us for Halloween. Trick or treating with us and our toddler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a gorgeous scene, and we get to see it every week in the opening credit. All right, worst scene. What do you got? There's a scene that I hate when Claire's drunk and Angus is taking her out, and she was like, <laughs> "I'm not drunk." And you smell like piss. That one <laughs> moment. Sm- <laughs> that one moment I didn't like. Um, the the worst scene for me, oh my God, was the piss scene. No. The piss scene was so, oh my Blake, God. Blake, you're a historical, per- like a historian. You I, should- love, I love historical context. I do. Truly, I do. But the piss scene was just okay, so, so the stupid. The wool washing. The wool, yeah, Can the you piss call scene. it that? Can you please call it that? Right, the wool washing scene. I, I, I feel like it was just it was thrown in there and it was it was to give Claire something to do. That's what it was to me. Yeah, why couldn't she go like see knitters or something? <laughs> Walking. <laughs> She's like, What what are you all doing? What's going on here? I think it was very interesting and it gave people insight into what the woman would be doing at that point. And then they followed it up with her like being all high and mighty with the pig and like uh, the chickens and how they had to take the payment. And she's like, there are babies starving out here. You know, like, come on. They needed that Get off your high horse. No, she's, you know, she cares about health and she knows that that baby needs it. I'm glad she spoke Who wants to like put their hands in piss? They have to. You know, people had to do things that, that we wouldn't think about doing right now because it was their only option. I bet you get used to it, especially if you've been drinking. It's fine. <laughs> you got to be sassanock wasted to like That's play with right. your piss. All right, Blake. People have been wondering, what is this big surprise that you keep taunting everyone with? <laughs> Deanna Harvey did say piss is sterile. And yes, it is sterile. But See? it's like, oh, it smells like piss. And, well, once you've been drinking a little bit, you probably can't smell it too much. <laughs> Okay. And and Laura just said we deal with it enough because we're changing a diaper. And you, it's true. Do you know how many times my son is pissed on me? It, it's like It's somewhat comical. It's like it's like a hose. Like he knows when I take the diaper off, he knows, okay, that's when I gotta let loose. It's ridiculous. I hate it. You just poorly plan. You need to cover. <laughs> cover. <laughs> All right. Yes. Shar M, he has mocked me. <laughs> All right. The big surprise. All right, first, this was w- the, the beginning part of the big surprise. Uh, hashtag context is everything. We wanted to do a live streaming event for you guys. That was important for us. We wanted to interact with you. We wanted to be a part of the community with you, have you talk with us as we we're talking. Um, I thought that was really special for all of us to get together. Uh, actually, by the way, this episode is not complete. We will get to that in a second. Um, but the next big part of the surprise uh no, it's not the the big surprise but the next thing that we have going on um is we actually got an interview with a mr christian mallet now you ask who's christian mallet who is christian mallet there it is christian mallet is the guy behind all of the makeup s- makeups like and, and like all of like the, all jamie's the sc- back jamie's back all the scarring everything that you saw with like the boar hunt um he's the one who did that um, and he, it, it was really cool. It was, it was a half hour long interview. We have that. Um, and just so you guys know, he worked on the Harry Potter movies and it's where he met his wife and he worked on all of like the goblin faces, which is why I geeked out when I first <laughs> found him. And I was like, you are my soul interview. <laughs> like I, I not soul me, but soul interview. You worked on Jamie's back and all of that. Uh, like like the the wounds when they did the boar hunt, all that stuff. And he is just, he's really entertaining. Yes, he is. Okay, so... Uh, we, that is another episode that is coming up. I'd say relatively soon. Uh, I think we'll probably have the history episode first, first first before that because we've been promising that for longer. Uh, but it is really cool. He did all that makeup work and it was it was awesome. It was a great conversation that we had with him. Now, the next thing that we have, that is not the big, big surprise. And unfortunately, again... You're such a tease. The big, big, big surprise. I cannot announce quite yet because it's still, we still have not got a date on it. And when we get a date on it, um, then we can announce it. But I will give you another clue. Okay. Then I've already talked about clues already and I've already, I promised I would give another clue. Okay. I'm waiting. The next clue is White House Down. I'm Googling it. I'm Googling it. <laughs> a White House black market came up because I shopped there. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much, I think. Uh, White House down. Okay, that is the next clue. Yes, 
Uh, and oh my it, god, Channing Tatum! <laughs> Channing Tatum. No, we did not get him. Um, so that is the next clue. It is uh, it is going to be our big surprise. And uh, uh, guys, I wish I could tell you now. I'm so sorry that we can't. But, but it's, if you it's find coming. a connection between Atlander and White House Down, yes. And considering you've... considering the other clues that I've given on Twitter, I think last night, um, it you should be able to gather what we're getting at here. Thank God you're not doing like a crossword puzzle because I stink at those. <laughs> I can Google. I can Google. <laughs> you could. You can Google. Um, yes, you know, I, I, I'm trying to be as much like Damon Lindelof as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't want to give it away, but I want I want to carry you along here. I okay. want you to I want you to meet me halfway. All right. Meet me halfway, guys. We will. We can do this. <laughs> we can do this together. I promise. No, right. white house down, not white dress down. <laughs> Is my accent really that bad? You, yeah. I love you, but <laughs> you know the funny thing, guys, is I, I still have a pretty bad accent, but I had a thick Rhode Island accent. And Rhode Island accents are like a mashup between uh, Boston and New York. And I really worked hard on getting rid of it because I ended up working as a television host and I didn't want people to know I was from Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And then I married Blake and he's brought out the worst of my accent because (laughs) it like sneaks back out and our poor child is going to, um, going to have a problem because he's going to have some really weird accents of his own. Oh my God. Our our kid is just totally screwed. (laughs) He's going to like sound like me and God bless him. Oh my God. It's going to be a total mess. So yeah, the, the big, the big, big, big surprise has yet to be announced. Uh, but we have an interview with Christian Mallet. That is the next portion of what we're going to be doing. You guys are going to love him. He's so freaking cool. And then we also, uh, have our history episode, which I know a lot of people are looking forward to. Um, I wish we could do that live too, but we're not going to. Uh, so that's that. And, uh, and oh, I'm wait, sorry. Go ahead. Go, no, go, no, 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 please. That, you no, first. No, no, that's okay. Go ahead, girlfriend. I'm just saying I'm making it up right now that we're going to do another one of these live episodes with you as well because I've absolutely loved chatting with you all throughout this and having your input. And we need something to do on Saturday nights. So I know. I know. And, loved having you. Hey, so guys, what do you think we should do? What do you like? Let, let's let's ask you right now. What do you want us to talk about? for our next live podcast. We'll leave it up to you guys. Give us some answers real, here real quick. We only got about four and a half minutes left. And uh, uh, let us know what you think. When you do listen to this episode in iTunes, it will be a fuller version because we're going to have our voicemail feedback and a couple more bits to it. So make sure that you are subscribed and that you listen to it to get the extra bits. Oh, people want to know more about casting, whiskey and wine. Well, Dina, I, I like that. I don't know a lot. Of, I, I mean, I, I drink it. I, I, good for you. Hey, Jody Lynn thinks she found out with the White House down thingy, but she'll never tell. It's because Jody's from Rhode Island. Yeah, girl. Good job. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Favorite locations they've shot at. Ooh, that's a nice idea, Shar. I like it. Well, obviously, you have fantastic ideas. Feel free to even tweet us some ideas if you do get them after our chat has officially ended. But for us, I think that this wraps it up. What do you think, Blake? I think we're going to be wrapping it up here, guys. Like I, like Mary said. This is not the last of this episode. We have a bunch of uh, listener feedback that we received. We have everyone's like um, voicemails that we got. We also have tweet of the week. We have a tweet of the season. The tweet of the season will be coming very soon. And uh, I think I think within the next couple of days, the second half of this episode will be coming out. It will include this live cast. So if you guys want to listen to it again, you want to listen to all the uh, all all the fun that we had. Uh, again, it will be included in that, but it will also include all the rest of the listener feedback that we had. Yes. So, all right. uh, and I want to give a shout out. I see that our friends from the Outlander podcast and the Scott and Assassinock have been joining us. Really? So, yeah, yeah. They're in our little chat room. So. Get out of here, guys. Welcome. I'm sorry we did not notice that. You've been sooner. focusing on, you know. I've been focused on trying to beat you. <laughs> yes, you have. Which I so. failed that miserably, by and the way. And both of those podcasts are continuing to do episodes as well in the hiatus. So make sure you check them out. We all need things to keep us busy and keep up our love for all, all things Outlander. And, you know. Yeah, to go, keep- go to their podcasts and please go review them. And, you know, Alistair and, and Lonnie and Summer and Ginger, you guys... You guys rock, you know, and uh, I, I'm actually kind of intimidated by all of you guys because you guys just have awesome podcasts and I feel like I'm a jamoke. Oh, Blake. I'm a jamoke who just does live feeds. 
and, I'm not, and I lose to my wife at everything. Oh no, you don't. We almost tied. Yes. Almost. Luckily, I'm <laughs> luckily I'm <laughs> luckily I'm a sore loser. All right, everyone. Well, this <laughs> wraps it up. Thank you so incredibly much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure to chat with you. Feel free to send us some tweets. We will definitely do one of these live sessions again with you in the future without having the technical difficulties that we had in the beginning. Uh, guys, and I'm don't sorry forget about that. to head on over to iTunes probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow this episode will be on up and you can I think maybe tomorrow or maybe the next day. Let's you know okay. let's promise the next day. <laughs> okay. Because right. tomorrow might be a little soon. Oh yeah, tomorrow you're working. All right. So check us out on iTunes. Send us some more love on Facebook, Twitter. Make sure you review Scott and the Sassanok and the Outlander podcast and hey Review us too. If you if you like us, if you think this was cool, or if you think it sucked, either way, let us know what you thought. And uh, I guess this wraps it up for all, all right. my feed. Have a great night, everyone. But before we close out the show, it is time to get to all of that fantastic listener feedback, the tweet of the week, and the ultimate tweet of the season. Oh, get to it, girl. All right. What do you say we do it? Let's do it. Hey, Mary and Blake. This is Dana down in Georgia. And you asked the question about the top favorite things from season one. Oh, <laughs> that's easy peasy. Okay, my number one is when Martaud says that she's no horror in the hideout cabin in like the first um, ser- series episode, whatever. And um, I like it when they show Claire getting dressed in all those layers, you know, just to show how much time it took. That was interesting. And number three, uh, Claire drinking in pretty much every scene. I mean, that girl can go down. Um, Number four, oh, God, sign me up. Jamie picking her up naked while we're standing up. Oh, my God, that's probably the best of the whole first season. Anyway, um, I forgot where I was. Okay, five. James, when Jamie's in the window in Black Jack's layer at the end, the way they ended it, I mean, it's a perfect grant of con. I'm going to kill you dead look. And I just, I love it. I love that look. Um, and so those are my five uh, for today. And uh, I came home. For lunch, just so I could do this and be flattered and all that. So, but anyway, so those are my five. And um, take care and keep it going because we love you. Bye. Hi, this is Keelan from North Shore, Boston. And these are my top five favorite things for the Outlander season so far. Um, the first one is just the, the slow way that they've taken and let the story grow and develop and the relationships build. It may have been tough for just the TV-only viewers, but as a book reader, I really appreciate that the patience that Ron Moore and his group has taken to just flush out the stories and really let those relationships build. Number four, um, they've kept pretty true to the book. While they've definitely adjusted the uh, a few things. I think it's only enhanced the story and the TV viewing audience. Um, I really enjoyed learning about Shinti and things like that, so that was kind of fun. And getting uh, Father Bain in there earlier to really understand what kind of person he was, I think, was a smart move. Number three, uh, Jamie's looks and his sideways glances towards Claire whenever he uh, does his little roll eyes. I just gets me every time. Um, for number two, the music. I have it as my ringtone. It just captures my heart from the opening sequence to the chase scene when Claire first enters uh, the 1740s to all the fight scenes. The music is just amazing. Excellent job there. And then, of course, number one, it has to be the scenery. Scotland, it just captures my soul. I can't wait to go. I'm already planning my trip with my daughter and my mom. I was there about 25 years ago. Um, but it really is incredibly breathtaking and just so inspiring. Um, on another comment, you guys are doing a great job with your podcast. I'm listening to all of them, and it's really been fun to review and hear um, everyone's thoughts and ideas behind it. It kind of enhances the whole experience for me. I had a thought or an insight, though. I don't know if you guys remember the scene where the women are worsting the wool and using the urine to set the dye. 
and Claire goes in uh, to help them out at the table, and they're singing the song. I think, are they singing um, one of the lines in the song there that says, Monian Down, where it means my brown-haired girl? Is that... Uh, is that one of the lines in that song? I just thought that was an interesting song that they were singing. And if those, in fact, were the words, I don't speak Gaelic. <laughs> but I thought that's kind of what I heard. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, keep up the good work. Thanks so much. I don't speak Gaelic either. <laughs> Neither do I. So I couldn't tell but, you. But I bet well, you we some did of go, our listeners will know what that song well, is. Well, we did go back. We did take a look at it. And I, I, we, I couldn't tell. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Caitlin, I, I, I got nothing for you. But uh, first, I want to talk about Deanna. Uh, Claire getting dressed, that was my favorite one of hers. Mm-hmm. I never knew how much, like, effort it was to put all those clothes on, right? And, like, it was a lot of different layers. It was cool to get that kind of perspective. I feel like it's that much work to get dressed now. <laughs> and with, it's not. With the kid and everything. Good Lord. And a doting husband. A bra. A bra <laughs> alone. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Caitlin, uh you you talk about Jamie rolling his eyes and glancing and everything. The thing I noticed that Jamie does whenever Claire talks to him and like he kind of like is like, "Oh, Claire," he does this, "Oh, Sasanak, it's okay." Oh, like that whole oh, thing. An audible oh. Yeah, it's like a, oh. you know, it's like a it's like a quick little giggle. Take my breath away. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. Oh, Berlin. I know. That's such a good band. Anyway. Yeah, so that's what I noticed. How about you? What do you think? What do you got, girl? I just like how much Dina mentioned that poor Claire drinks all the time. <laughs> She's just getting sass and I'm telling you, it's because there's no Aquafina. I know. So I liked that. All right, let's get on the next batch of calls. Hey, Mary and Blake. This is Cheryl from Atlanta, Georgia. And I've been listening to you guys since mid season. Um, and I think you guys are great, hilarious, funny, um, and a lot of great points. Um, some most I agree with and some Blake that I don't agree with. Ha ha. But anyway, um, so uh, this is my first time calling. I hope I don't blabber. But um, five things that um, – top five things from the first half of the season. And it was a slow day today, so um, I spent some time thinking about it. And the first thing, top thing for me is just visually seeing the story come to life. It is just so awesome. Um, I had my doubts at first. Um, because I have had some favorite, favorite books come to the screen, big and small, and they've been pretty bad. So I was a little worried, but then when I heard it was a miniseries, my hopes got up, and um, I was just, just, it's just fabulous. Anyway, so just visually seeing it come to life is um, the, one of the best, uh, my one of my top five things. Um, and I'm a huge Davina Porter fan, too, so um, just listening to it, so much. I was like watching a movie in my head, so I'm actually seeing it this time. So it's really cool. Um, the second favorite thing about the first half is um, the actors. They're so freaking great. Um, everyone. They're just kicking butt. They are nailing it. They're just nailing it. Um, and the trifecta, Kate, Sam, and Toby are just, they're just really owning their characters. Um, it's just so great to see Claire, Jamie, and then Frank slash BJR. Um, and of course, the production is spectacular too. Uh, let's see, number three is actually, I'm surprised at this because I usually don't like it when movies uh, or shows change things from books, but I'm really loving the differences that they're doing to the show. And it's like, it's little differences, maybe some big differences, but it's actually differences is not the right word. It's more like variations because. The variation, yes, it's different, but the essence is the same thing. And that's what's just so spectacular about Ron Moore and his production team. Um, it's like with the um, Miss Fitzgibbon's um, nephew, that whole thing that took place. I can't remember what episode it was, but towards the beginning. And that obviously wasn't in the book, but I think it captured the essence and the same message that the Changeling um, chapter uh, was portraying. And so, um, Blake, Mary can fill you in on that whole changeling thing, but it was just, it got the message across the exact same way. Um, okay, number four, let's see what's number four. I'm looking at my list while I'm driving. Um, the Outlander community, it is so fantastic. And I'm not ashamed to admit it, but I was a huge Twy fan, um, hence the reason for disappointment with movies, um, but, um, of the books. And 
the community was just outrageous, and so is this Outlander community, and I'm just loving being a part of it. So thank you for the podcast and everything. Um, and then number five is I have found my new actor crush. I just think Sam Deegan is the most adorable, hottest thing in the world. Um, and so this 39-year-old is crushing hard like a 16-year-old on adorable Sam. Oh, my, he's just so cute. And I think that's it. Hey, Mary and Blake, it's Peggy. Hi. Hello, hello. Again, those people who gave you bad reviews suck. Just saying. As Blake would say, they're wicked horrible. <laughs> anyway, I think I added a little too much art in there. Okay, so five things from point five season of Outlander. Um, I don't want to make my five things too obvious, so I'm going to read them off my list because I literally had to write them down or I was going to forget. So let's see. One. The development of friendship between Claire and Jamie before having to marry. That was one. Two, the humorous banter between Angus and Rupert. Three, Dougal's slips of humanity between his bouts of nasty behavior. Four, the men sticking up for Claire when the other Scots were talking trash. Poor Sassanac. And five, the entire clan having part in the wedding. I like that it became an almost family affair. Um, I don't think I can get any more specific than that. Um, and I don't know exactly what you wanted, if you wanted, like, a whole conversation, but I highly doubt that. So I'm going to leave it at that. And um, I look forward to a new podcast from you guys. And, again, you guys rock. Don't listen to the haters. Haters got to hate. You know, bakers got to bake. Drunks got to drink. Right? Sauce not wasted. Later. Peggy, thank you so much for that. Drunk's got a drink. Oh, I just started singing the Taylor Swift. Hate is gonna hate, 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 Oh, no, hate. please don't bring Taylor Swift into this conversation. Already did. Do I? No, please don't. Oh, it's done. God. She's so bad. But thank you, Peggy. You made us feel a lot better. And Cheryl, been... you're doing this while you're driving? You're reading your stuff off while you're driving? That's like so illegal. That's more illegal than me making a video on Facebook and then I don't <laughs> talking think, about I Outlander. I think you are more illegal. You think I was more illegal? Yeah. I don't think so. I think so. Because she's talking on the phone, reading, and like trying to concentrate on that at the same time. You I don't were know. making a video, Blake. Yeah, I know, but I was I was paying attention to the road. Not I don't have really. to like read anything on the video. Anyway. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, Cheryl, I think you're right. Um, the book changes are great. I like that you say that because you didn't even read the book. No, no. What I mean is like the, the, the fact that they actually want to change the book. They're making it their own story. And... In large part, I think a lot of people are cool with the changes that are happening, except for the whole Frank story, which I love, but no one will get over that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How about you, kid? What do you got? I am a huge Twilight fan, too, and I completely agree with you that they should have just been made into a large TV show. So I'm happy with you, and I agree with you on that, and I also agree about crushing on Sam. Holy hot. That's <laughs> all. And, and when you see him online and you see him in other interviews, he's even more precious Oh, he is kind of cute. He is. He's like, yeah, he's, but he's, he's like he's super cute. He's got a cute. cute personality to go along with it. Let me ask you this real quick. If Twilight was made into an HBO show, you think it would be a lot better? Um, we're on Stars. Well, sorry, Stars, HBO, whatever. It's premium cable. <laughs> would, I, would it have been better? Yeah, would it have been better? Yes. You think so? Yes. Why? Because there would have had to have been a lot of character depth. I, for one... Uh, grappled in the books with how could she fall in love with him so quickly and at least you had some basis to go off of and mm -hmm. that's the same thing with this show you know you're able to take the time to really see the relationships just like Peggy said how during the wedding scene you got to see what everyone was doing mm -hmm. that's what you need that is the magic of having television series versus an hour and a half two and a half hour movies yep. you get so much more depth you get to know these characters and actually care about them well peggy because... was also right too because she had talked about the budding friendship between jamie and claire mm -hmm. and that's something that a, t a movie would not be able to afford no it would literally be like the look oh you're hot you're hot all right <laughs> let's bang <laughs> <laughs> happy wedding night all right next set of calls Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Teddy Potter in New Jersey. Uh, first, I want to say how much I love your podcast, which I just recently discovered, so now I'm going to be listening to them to get me through the hiatus. Here's my top five, and I'm going to squeak in a six. 
Jamie and Claire's wedding night, beloved by millions, and now I have visually there to support what I'll always have from the book. Um, Claire being dressed by Mrs. Spitz uh, when she first comes to Leah, and this is a pivotal swing into the 18th century. Um, Zulu and Claire helping Geordie to die was a critical moment in this story because it says a lot about Claire and what I think might happen uh, in in the future, and I'll leave that alone. Uh, Wee Rogers' disappearance. I'm sorry, not disappearance, his appearance. That was fabulous. Um, and I have to say, despite the need for hot piss, the wool walking scene was fabulous because it showed Claire as being courageous and a good sport and blending in or melding in with the locals. Uh, and willing to do what has to be done uh, to get through the day. So thank you, and that's my top five and a half to six. Bye-bye now. Okay, it would be Jamie Frazier, Jamie Frazier, Jamie Frazier, Murtaugh, and Dougal. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Grisha. So, the top five of Outlander. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. So, I finally found five. Um, I love the teamwork of the whole show, but especially um, between the camera, the directing and the editing. I think what they create in front of our eyes is just so freaking awesome. So I really love it. Um, I love the Scottish landscape. I totally fell in love with uh, Scotland. And one day or another, I really want to go there. So Jean, if you're listening, here's your girl. I love the dialogues. I think they are perfectly well written. They are so sad, so funny sometimes, and so deep. Um, and I really enjoy it. Um, I love Frank. Um, I don't have a specific reason, I think, why. I don't know. He's gentle, he's cute, he's sweet. Um, it's Tobias Menzies, so, yeah, point. Um, I love the opening song. Actually, I love the whole soundtrack, but the opening song is just the perfect mixture of feeling sad and being so happy at the same time. So I really love that. And I love you, Marion Blake. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mary Flake. This is Lori from Indiana, and I hope I'm not too late to make the podcast about the top five things um, for the first half of Outlander season, but uh, here I go in case I'm in time. Um, my top five are um, number five, little moments of character. I love when um, Claire had her little drunken scene before the wedding, you know, when she wakes up and Myrtle sees her looking frightful. The look on Jamie's face when Claire tends his gunshot wound and he she's spouting off the profanity. Um, all the little bits with Angus and Rupert and then um, Claire, you know, sliding down to the across the floor as she and Frank rush into the marriage office. All those little things just give depth of character and I really enjoy them. Um, this, the fourth thing I love is the music. Bear McCreary is just hitting it out of the park. I think it's a whole other character on the show, and it wouldn't be half as good without the music. I particularly love the scene with Claire and Frank both approaching the stones, and um, the choice to have Claire hear the 40s music in her head um, when she's by herself. I also think that's really inspired. The third thing I love is the cast. I think that the main cast of Sam Heelan, Tobias Menzies, and Katrina Balfe are all just knocking it out of the park. Tobias Menzies really makes you feel like Frank and Blackjack are two separate people, and he amazes me. Um, Sam really has done his homework on Jamie, and he's pulling in a lot of things from the book to show his uh, character. Um, he has a way to be both manly and boyish at the same time, uh, which I find really endearing. And um, the little details like finger tapping when he's nervous or anxious, rubbing the back of his head, all those things are really Jamie mannerisms that I enjoy. Um, the second thing is the cinematography. I find it just gorgeous. I love how big it feels. It doesn't feel like a small um, television show. It feels really big. I get almost a lost type feel with how big it feels. It's just different than any other TV show that's out right now. 
Um, I also love the deliberate color choice of the palettes between um, the 40s and the 1740s and how you can really differentiate that visually. And then my favorite thing of the season was the wedding. Um, I watched this episode repeatedly. I just loved every minute of it. I loved Jamie describing Claire as the sun on a cloudy day. I loved um, all of the scenes. I thought they were very beautiful, honest, awkward, and raw. They did not feel exploitive um, to me at all. I, I love the structure of the episode, building up the tension to the actual wedding, allowing the audience to see Jamie's point of view as he described things to Claire. I just love that. All right, guys, thank you for those calls. And Teddy, welcome to the family. Welcome to joining us. Even though you're late, it doesn't matter. We're always welcoming you with open arms. What do you think, kid? Oh, my gosh, completely. That's the magic of podcasts. You don't have to watch everything in real time. Exactly. You know, a lot of the podcasts that I listen to, they're wicked old. Like back <laughs> when podcasts first came out to be. I still listen to the Jay and Jack podcasts about Lost. And they, those came out back in like 06, 07. Yep. You know, so welcome. And I'm I, very I like happy the, to have you. I agree. It's it's awesome. So thank you. No matter if you if you joined us at the beginning or now or two years from now, it doesn't matter. Who cares? And I, about your top five, the one I wanted to pick out was Jordy Dying. They, get, they put so much emphasis on that scene. I thought that was fantastic. It that, was beautiful. That, that almost uh, broke my top five, as a matter of fact. And not because um, it was just because of Dougal or Claire or anybody. It was just because it was such a beautifully done scene. I'm not going to lie. I almost forgot about it until just now. Wow, really? Well, well, it was such a momentous thing. But then when you put all this pressure about, okay, you got to pick your top five moments. I mean, your mind is racing. And I shop for big ones. <laughs> and Krisha and Lori, you are two women who are completely after my heart. And luckily, I'm married to the woman that's sitting right next to me. And she is the prettiest girl I ever met, like I've said. <laughs> because not only did you, Krisha, mention Frank, but Lori, you mentioned two things that are the probably the most important things to me on this planet besides my wife character development and lost <laughs> you just that's it that's that's how it goes you cannot have a good show you cannot have a good story unless everything is based in the characters you can have the greatest story of all time ever told but if your characters suck y your show is going to suck and yep. everything has to everything has to derive themselves out of the characters. I don't know. Do you do you agree? Oh yeah, definitely. And I loved how Krisha also wanted to make mention of the dialects and how, you know, the scenery and everything. I mean, just gosh, his feedback was great. It's so true. I mean, the world, like Lost, is big. Mm -hmm. Way to go, guys. Nice job. All right, next set of calls. Um, in re response to um, my five top favorite things about um, Outlander season zero point five. Um, number five would be men in kilts. Number four would be the wedding dress. Number three would be the weird gay list. She's weird. Number four would be to the card. And number one would be Jamie and Claire getting to know each other in the wedding chamber. Thanks a lot, you guys. Love your podcast. Can't wait for the rest of season one. Great point about Gayless. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I was going to say that, too. Yeah? Oh, yeah. We're still married. Oh, my God. It's cute. <laughs> <laughs> what a great character. She is She's really cool. And I'm telling you, my outlandish theory of the week is right. I guarantee you she's a traveler, too. That's what you're going to call them now? Travelers? I'm calling yeah, traveler. That's oh, it. She's a traveler. I know. Cause it's because I'm awesome. How many times do I got to say this? I'm just keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> I, I really, honest to God, she is too interested in everything that Claire wants to do. I don't know. Sometimes girls are like that. Oh, yeah, you I, were just saying tonight how one of my girlfriends... Mm -hmm can't mind her own business doesn't shut the hell up and, and talks about other people and wants to know everyone's business so maybe maybe that's what galas is like I, this person and galas are pretty much the same exact person <laughs> nosy all the, they're just getting other people's business and like a lot of women do that i think even you have bouts of that actually wait what no 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 i don't think excuse i know me? you excuse do have bouts me? of that oh do i need to tell the story about the reunion please don't yeah that will be saved for another day. Okay. 
I, th- so this is a teaser for you guys. It's just Mary had a bout of problems <laughs> with a reunion that my ten year reunion that <laughs> I decided to take over. It was. It wasn't even a takeover. It was a coup d'état. It was. It just needed to be better. It was a violent overthrow of power. Oh God, that sounds so mean. Thousands died. Oh. Blood was everywhere. Everyone ended up being very happy in the end. Uh, I, I imagine so. All right, kid. What do you say we get into the tweet of the week? This week's tweet of the week comes from Steph otherwise known at, as at Crooked Knits on Twitter. She says, and th- yeah, actually she was commenting uh, after we talked about some, how some people gave us uh, some bad reviews uh, and we were a little down about it. And she, Steph came to our defense and Peggy, you too came to our defense. Thank you so much. Um, she says, maybe they just need to get their corn ground a bit more frequently. Works wonders on some some people. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, my God. You <laughs> went there. <laughs> That's why it's the tweet of the week. Wow. Well deserved. <laughs> Steph, excellent job. And congratulations on being this week's tweet of the week. But we have... One more award to give out, ladies and gentlemen, and that is the Tweet of the Season. Woo-hoo! What do you say we get to it? Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, this is a big honor, guys, because this only happens once per season. So everyone should be looking forward and marking the day when this comes about and trying their best effort to get the Tweet of the Season. So, you want to know who it is? Yes. This one comes from at Haunt1013. This was after the wedding episode, and he said, I think the latest episode spontaneously created sex. There's more sex in the world now. It's like global warming, warming, but only global sexing. Oh, my God. (laughs) We we have the best listeners. I'm blushing. (laughs) Created more... I will believe that. Spontaneously created sex. I Just like some other people were saying that there's probably going to be a lot of babies Damn nine straight. months from now. Well, nine mm-hmm. months from the wedding. Mm-hmm. It's, it's totally going to happen. How many babies are going to be named Claire or Jamie after oh, that? Oh, what beautiful names. It actually is kind of good names, right? Yeah. Claire is a nice, a nice pretty name. It is. And Jamie, well, you know, yeah. How about Jamie's got like Jamie's got like six different names, so pick, pick one of them. There you go. Jampf. <laughs> J- Jamp could be a name. Yeah. <laughs> What's your baby's name? Jamp. Jamp. With two M's. What's your problem? You got a problem with that, bro? Jamp. <laughs> He's lucky he has a vowel. <laughs> Otherwise, you couldn't be able to do it. Our kid doesn't have a vowel. I know. He's in trouble. Reese. We spell Reese R H Y S. It's the old Welsh way for those of you who don't know. But people call him Rice. Oh and my he's God. also or been Rahis. called Rahis. <laughs> Rahis. And, I- and we are like the most non-ethnic looking people ever no. and they're like is rahis here and we're like um it's who's, it's freeze who's rahis <laughs> oh no they make it up oh my so god we get so no vowels paul at haunt 1013 congratulations on being this year's this season's up oh. <laughs> really <laughs> my phone thinks i'm still walking from oh my an hour god. ago uh, it's you know, I'm to just me. gonna keep that in. It's saying that I've walked two miles. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, Mary ruined your tweet of the I'm season. I'm so sorry. So, let's, you know what, Paul? Congratulations on being <laughs> this week, this this season's tweet of the season. Wow, this is a total crap show. This whole podcast. It started off bad. We're ending badly. It's because I've been so sick. If we have any more fans after this podcast. I will be surprised. I'll be thankful. And I just need to do a little quick shout out, guys. We, of course, recorded this live Saturday night. Yes. And it's coming out pretty much a week later. And I need to apologize. I have been. It's all Mary's fault. It is. I've been wicked, wicked, wicked sick. Wicked sick. Um, I, f- I feel bad because she's been like down and out. And yeah. I've been like, come on, we got to go do podcasts. And I've been like that guy. Yeah. You know, that like keeps pushing and she's like, I just want to breathe. I can't. <laughs> I can't move. Yeah. I've been the, sick. So yeah. I truly appreciate your patience. And we've gotten a few people being like, where are you? And I've been um, in bed. I've been holding off the dogs with, with a stick. Yes. Thank you. Get so, away. Get away. We will get to it. I promise. Mary is ill. And now... I'm still ill, but I'm here. 
I'm here, guys. I did it. <laughs> she, <laughs> so thank you. she muscled it out. I'm so proud of her. Thank you. All right. What do you say we close out the show, kid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love podcasting. I do. I just feel very pukey. <laughs> this is this is the worst episode of Outlander Cast we've ever done. Okay, just wrap it up. All right, let's do it. If you want to talk to us ever again. <laughs> if you ever want to listen to us ever again after this episode. Okay. Well, first, find us in iTunes. Just search Outlander. You can find us either if you search Outlander in the podcast section or search Outlander Cast itself, and mm-hmm. we'll come on up. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And all of our handles there, it's just OutlanderCast. That's right. You can get us at OutlanderCast at gmail.com as well. And a couple of announcements. One is we have introduced a brand new merchandise shop on our website, OutlanderCast.com. You can go there and get all the cool Mary and Blake merchandise from OutlanderCast, from the Living Reminders show, from ParentCast, our other show. You get all tons of cool Mary and Blake swag. And uh, t-shirts are there and some other products. It's good stuff. So please go over there to OutlanderCast.com. Check out all the shirts that we made, especially the hashtag Sassanok Wasted shirt, which I feel like is going to be our best seller. What I do you agree. Think? I agree. So check that out as well. And uh, up, up next, I think for us, is going to be the History Christian, Podcast. Oh, the, you're right. The History Podcast. The History P- Podcast. And then after that, Christian Mallet, the Correct. makeup. And then the big surprise after that. Oh we're, my gosh. We're, still, we're still waiting on that, unfortunately. I feel like I'm getting pushed around here. But, you know, it, it is what it is. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening to us. We love you. And you guys have been so patient. You're awesome. You're our family. Just like that listener said, it's so great because of the community. And... I couldn't echo that more. I it's agree. really been great. I've been rewatching Outlander while I've been sick. It makes <laughs> she has. It's, it's been like pathetic. a warm hug. <laughs> She's like, oh, it's like bananas that. toast and Outlander. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kid. Everyone, I'm Mary. My name is Blake, and you've been listening to the worst episode of Outlander cast we've ever put out. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>